Um, Adrian, can, can we can we talk about the situation before we jump into this? Yeah, yeah. What's what's the situation? What's the deal, girl? How busy of a human being are you? You you get slotted thirty minutes. Hey, you know I like to vent. You know I need my time. You can't run from me. Yeah. So this month is crazy. I don't I can know. Tell. I don't know how I ended up being so busy. It's good. Um, but also this month is me figuring out how to like streamline a bunch of shit. So I'm not so busy. Like for example, yesterday I spent a few hours automating a lot of my social media. So I'm still creating oh, all the posts. Shit. I'm still, still my Adrian thoughts. And, but up, I'm like, girl. So, so that way it's more consistent. And then I'm not driving myself crazy every day trying to come up with like some Adrian, new. Please give me some of your just like energy. Like what's up girl? This is Nursing Uncensored. Your host, Adrienne Benning, invites you to listen in on real conversations about all things in the nursing world. This podcast is intended for nurses, nursing students, and allied health professionals, but non-medical folk will probably get a kick out of us too. If you like what you hear, subscribe and share. All right. So I'm ready. Like, let's jump in. I know you, your day is like tight, tight, tight knit. So yeah. I'm and ready I don't like are. scheduling myself tight, but we got, we got like an hour, a little hour, a little oh, more. Oh. So I actually am sandwiching this interview. By the way, I'm really happy to have you here. Welcome to Nursing Uncensored and all that jazz. Um, but you're back. And I'm glad yes. you're back. Well, and you. um, today is kind of a busy day for me, but it's not that I'm trying to squeeze you in with little time it's that this i i want to talk to you on the show and in life in general so much that i'm willing to like carve out little periods of the day where i can do that so oh good <laughs> good 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 i'm all about it i'm in i'm in i'm game let's make it happen yeah so just to give you a brief little description of what my day is. So this morning for about an hour at the hospital I work at, I had a shared governance kind of like introductory meeting. I've never been mm -hmm. on a shared governance committee before. I work in a magnet hospital. So for those of you that know about magnet, it's like we have to do a bunch of shit to hit a status to make us attractive to nurses. So one of those things is shared governance where nurses are on committees and we do all sorts of Today was that day where they were like, welcome to your first committee. Here's what all of this is. And uh, yeah, so that's what I did. And then we're going to talk about some things today. We got some plans to talk. And then I'm going to go back to the hospital for a unit-based staff council meeting that I'm co-chair of. But you got to remember, I only work like 24 hours a week. So that is 80% of full time according to my job. So I'm still getting paid. Like I'm still more than part time technically, but all this extra shit that I do, this is like the stuff that I do because I don't have kids. I don't have another job. Like this is my hobby, my passion. Whatever. So that's, that's kind of my day. After that, I'm probably going to lay in bed and watch like Will and Grace and yes. eat ice cream. <clears throat> So, because <laughs> you got to do it, you have to do it. Look, you have to do it. Look, and I want to work okay, so, smart and not hard, right? You're down with that too, exactly. right? Smart, you've got to, you've got to work smart, not hard. We've talked about this. I like it. That's but a busy I want to, I want to stop talking about me, and I want to talk about you because last <laughs> we talked, you had a new adventure that you were embarking oh, yes. on. Yes, so yes, yes. So those yes. who have listened know what I'm talking about, but I want you to talk about your adventure. I want the dirty oh, details course. about what you're doing right now. <laughs> yeah, so yes. So my new adventure, the last time we talked, I was telling Adrian that I was about to uh, and start being a travel nurse for the first time. And I have, I have become a travel nurse since the last time I've been on. And oh my God, it is a lifestyle. Look, yeah. Look, out there. <laughs> so, so, so if you do remember the conversation we had, I was like to the moon. I was super excited. I thought it was the greatest thing ever. Every nurse should do it. I tried to convert Adrian into being a travel nurse. Like, <laughs> you I sure was, did. <laughs> I was 1000% gun ho about being a travel nurse. Um, and then since being a travel nurse, there are huge, huge things you need to know before going in to make sure that this might be something that you could do. 
but at the same time if it's something that you are for doing it is fantastic mm-hmm. it's just been great adrian it's just been great i mean i can't say anything but great but it's just been great so i mean that's where i am i'm a travel nurse my first assignment was down in connecticut for like the, it was like a month a month and a half and then i jumped up to maine get the new england coastal area taken oh care my of. god my nurse Moved best friend south. is from maine Oh, wait, really? He, yeah, my, uh, my, my BFF, my work wife, so to speak, grew up, um, uh, in the country somewhere. I'm trying to remember near Portland, (laughs) Maine, Portland, Maine. So I'm in Portland, Maine, and I found out really quickly for all you Mainers that are listening, I'm sorry to say, but God damn it. It is boondocks everywhere five minutes outside of Portland. <laughs> so literally, you'll drive five minutes out of Portland, and it is woods and cows and fucking horses. It is just boondocks boon- everywhere. I kind of like that. Go. So do you at least have all of the benefits of, like, I hear there's, like, a good food scene there. Mm. I mean, I don't know. It's yeah, also the whitest state in the country, so I don't yeah. know if that means that... You can say that again, Adrian. You can say yeah. that again, boo-boo. <laughs> No, no complaint. Look, I'm a nurse. I'm loving it. I'm enjoying it, right? And I'm in a in a hospital right in the city. So I live like five minutes from the hospital, which means I live in the city. Nice. Which means if you, anyone knows anything about me, I live and thrive upon like the social life. But outside of that, you're right. You're right. What else do you need? Portland is a great city. It's a great town. You guys, it's fun, but it's just a lot of fucking trees and a lot of nothing and a lot of it's <laughs> are, just are you do else. you have any outdoorsy bones in your body like are you into hiking snowshoeing very, any of the shit that's happening in january in maine no very very little so <laughs> i do plan on going on ski trips and uh, snowboarding because everyone and their mother skis and snowboards out here have you um, ever been do, skiing before i have like two I, or three times i haven't it was yeah oh wait seriously seriously but you're in Illinois, right? Yeah, I grew up near, very close to Chicago. Now I live four There's hours. There's definitely west of skiing Chicago. out there. I mean, there are places. I mean, we're pretty flat, but there are like businesses that like have hillsides somewhere where you can I ski guess. down. But okay. maybe you're right. Maybe there isn't that much. Definitely not as much as out here. I but saw yeah, a no. place on like Interstate 35 coming back from Minneapolis, but that was literally <laughs> like a massive hill along the interstate. So yeah, <laughs> no, but for all those nurses out there, just to just make like just to put this in context so you can understand, like it doesn't matter where you go. If you are going to be doing travel nursing, like if you just accept like the bare bones that you need to accept, yeah, it's cold out in Maine. Yeah, it might snow a couple more days than usual, but like. It is so fun. It is so interesting to go to a new hospital, see what they do, how they do what they do, talk to new nurses, talk, talk about how they go about seeing everything that happens to all nurses everywhere, but the way they, their perspective is. Like, it is a fantastic thing, and I am still on that same high that I was the last time I was on. If you have the opportunity to do it, if you have any inclination in doing it, I, yes, please, please, please do it, because it do is it. fantastic. So I got to ask, how much training have you gotten, if any, at the two hospitals that you've been at so far? Are they both yeah. both hospitals? Both hospitals. Yeah. Yes, both hospitals. And um, it is the training is super, super simple. So the training is like, they'll, they'll, the orientation you go through is like, where are the fire exits? Where are the, you know, like, what do you do in a code, uh, code blue? What the, What is the four digit code you can type on the thing? Or where is How the do you buttons? use a fire extinguisher? Exactly. Like the real like things <laughs> that you have to know when you're going into any new job. And then after that, it's, you'll go on one day of orientation, two days of orientation, maybe three, a full week of orientation. Um, and then they'll ask you, do you need more? Do you want less? Do you want another person? They really cater it to you so okay. you can learn the fastest because they want to get you on the floor the fastest because all travelers know they cost a lot like as a travel nurse i know i cost a lot more at the hospital i work at than a regular nurse Mm -hmm. so they want you to be a nurse as soon as you possibly can some places give you one two days and ask you if you're ready and just be honest if you are yeah i'm ready let me get paid and for the job I'm getting done. If you're not ready, say no. I need a couple more days. So for those listening, how many years have you been a nurse? I've been a nurse, I'd say, I I like to say three years now. I want to say three. I'll stop saying two and a half. I've been a nurse for three years um, and I've been a travel nurse for about. Do you feel like you've been adequately prepared to like throw into a situation you've never been in and function? I mean, granted, there's always going to be stuff that you need 
resources, assistance, whatever. But like, do you feel that functionally and for all intents and purposes, you can be a nurse anywhere you go? For me personally, yes. Yeah. The answer for me is yes. But the answer for everybody else is it's how willing are you to ask for help when you need it? If you're mm -hmm. the kind of nurse that you really like, if you're the kind of nurse that is nervous about asking for help, if you're the kind of nurse that won't ask for help until things go wrong, travel nursing is going to be very hard. You need to be a super experienced nurse until you do it. But if you are a new nurse and you want to travel, but you have no issue people judging you, giving you the eye, looking at you with that fucking, are you stupid look? Like if you have no problem raising your voice and saying, I've never done this. I want to help here. What is the code to this thing? How do I get this? Who do I page? What is the doctor's name? If you have no problem asking those questions and yes, getting some attitude from some people, usually the minority, then travel nursing is good for you. So you have to be comfortable being uncomfortable, basically. Most definitely. Most, I mean, that's, you, that's yes, Adrian. I mean, oh, but yes. that's, that's nursing because even on your own floor where you know where all the light switches and the bathrooms are, you're still going to have shit that you don't know how to do that you need to learn on the fly, figure out how to do it. And that's a lot of what traveling is, like figuring out where the med room is, where the supply room is, and then applying the critical thinking and shit that you already know to people in a different place. Because while... People are all different and there are so many variables. The human body is the human body. So if you've worked, you know, neuro on the East Coast, you can work neuro on the West Coast. Exactly. There's a, there are a lot of universal truths. And then, you know, you pick up the rest as you go on. Hopefully the unit culture, I've talked about this before, I've blogged about it. If you're treating your travelers and your floaters like shit, then really what are, what are you doing? Get out of here. They're here to help you. You want to send that nurse away? That person that you're like rolling your eyes at and being annoyed at, you want to send them off? You can absorb their patients. How about that? Oh, suddenly you're less annoyed with them. Yeah. <laughs> Be nice. Yes. Travelers. And this is, this is a soapbox. Yes. Travelers are getting paid more than you are, but they're also away from home in a place they've never been to. They don't necessarily have a built-in system of family, friends, etc. And they're there. Yeah. For the money, but also to help us out. So um, unless you've got travelers that are being super shitty to you, you should be welcoming them and showing them where things are and answering their questions instead of that, like, are you fucking stupid look, which I've, <laughs> I've seen even going to other floors in my hospital or like clinical sites when I'm a student. And it's like, no, really, I know how to do this. I just don't know where the fuck you keep your butt wipes. Like, yes. really, like, this is not, this is not a stupidity thing. This is just a, Hey, I'm the new guy here. Um, exactly. But the nice thing is, is that while it's nice to have a good assignment, if you don't like it, what you stayed at your first place a month and a half, and then you hit the road. Exactly. You've got the option. So, yeah. You got the option. So there's like the, the, the shortest uh, contract I've seen is six weeks and the longest I've seen is like six months. Um, but you have everything in between. And, I, and the most off, the most um, frequent one used or what most nurses do is usually three months. Yeah. But I, I, I want to just talk about a couple of things you said. And uh, uh, please that yeah. just like nail on the head. Number one, it's so if you are if you are a nurse now and you are curious as what to what's um, travel nursing is like, just try just remember what it's like when you have to float right and just not knowing those things but knowing the bigger picture right you might not know if you're a cardiac nurse and you float to the ortho floor you might not know the nitty-gritty of what happens on the ortho floor but you understand the big picture yeah right? we, we we try to prevent the big the big 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 problems and once they're good enough we'll send them to a rehab that is what a travel nursing is like if you can just put yourself into what am i like during a float am i nice to the other nurses do i welcome the challenge if you're not comfortable in that situation, travel nursing might be very difficult for you. And then the second thing is, you're right. Yes, I am a travel nurse. So obviously I have that bias, but the bigger picture is like, if I'm being a dick to any nurse at the nursing station, whoever, yeah, be a dick to me. I deserve that shit. But <laughs> if I'm confused, if I'm legitimately confused, just give me the better for the doubt. Cause I promise mm -hmm. I'm not trying to be a, a bum or a bad nurse or annoying. I'm just trying to figure out what the situation is. <laughs> yeah. Give them a break. They don't exactly. even know where the bathrooms are. Please and thank you. <sighs> yeah. So, what have there been any um, 
any any new place like do you have anything on your radar for the future oh, like yeah. where oh, are you gonna goodness. go somewhere warm like you're yes, going to all these cold <laughs> places <laughs> yeah, yeah, in the yeah. north hemisphere's winter like what are so you my, doing that's a good everyone and their mother's been asking me that same questions patients <laughs> included look so look this is the thing i decide because I, I have to take my baby my silver surfer my prius with me wherever i go mm-hmm. so my in my head i was like let me get new england done with right sure. i was like if I'm going to go to Maine, I got to go to Maine when it's really Maine. And that's in the middle of the winter. So I went to Connecticut. I went up to Maine. And by the way, time out. I only went to Maine because the New York license took a lot longer. <laughs> <laughs> the truth. <laughs> the truth comes out. Yeah. So I wanted to go to New York after Connecticut to be real, but I went to Maine. The license took quicker and I wanted to get up here as soon as possible. So that's what I did. Came up to Maine. And now I feel like I've had New England. I've, I've understood it. I grew up in Boston. Connecticut, Maine, I'm done. Let's dip. So I'm going down south and then going out to west. But to be okay. honest, like being out here in Maine, it's like it's it's fantastic. Do you like seafood? Fantastic. Yes. And everyone Have in you had a lobster roll? Me, they keep telling me that this is not the right season and people It's keep not. Me, <laughs> it's not. I just had to ask. <laughs> yes. But no, because apparently there are two there there two different kinds of lobster rolls and i can't remember which is from which but i love lobster rolls so i just had I'm to not ask. a chef and i'm definitely not a seafood well, it does, yeah that's but okay. i'll find we're out not, and i we're will not report gonna get back. into that um <laughs> so also so uh my friend brad and i brad who grew up in maine brad's been on the show um oh, way back way back when but um yeah he grew up in maine and so we have all of these he and i have these arguments about uh regional dialect slang phrases things like that and one of the things i'm going to call him out here because this just it makes me laugh every time and i think about it all the time so where i grew up the the donuts that you buy that are kind of long and rectangular they're really wide but they're not very tall Mm -hmm. uh, not usually filled with anything but they can be do you know what kind of donut i'm talking about I think so. Are you talking about? Wait, wait, uh, what do you call it? Um, is it a um, no, no, no? It's we had it. So one of the patients gave it us as a gift. It's a granola, not not a granola, no, a cannoli, a cannoli. No, th- okay, that's that's it. So what I'm thinking wait, of what do you here, mean long here and- in the Midwest, we have donuts that we call long johns. Oh, and that's not a thing. so out in <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. okay so brad's gonna brad's gonna want to high five you in maine they're called donut sticks like the dunkin donuts in maine it's called a donut stick and so brad one day was like hey get me a donut stick and i was like what the fuck is a donut stick? in my head i think of like french toast sticks which is something anyway totally it different. was like a regional thing but um there was one night that we were at the nurse's station and one of my good friends who has since passed away this is one of my favorite last memories of her is that we were sitting at the nurse's station and he and i were like having this argument about donut sticks versus long johns long johns is also a regional term for like long underwear it was like this big regional debacle that we had and at one point brad actually got really kind of pissed at me and like firmed off just went back down to the other end of the hall and my friend and I were like oh my god we were laughing we we're like oh my god he's really mad like I'm really involved in a legit argument about <laughs> the regional names for donuts so anyway long story short anytime I'm in Maine I think of those fucking donut sticks yes um, but anyway I'm, I'm glad that you're having a good traveling experience and that um sure that 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 the first one was good. It it propels you, boosts your confidence. So I'm glad you're having a good experience with this. I'm I'm you, gonna I'm gonna really enjoy this. I'm do you really do you this. foresee yourself doing this until you don't want to do it anymore? No expiration date or I don't know what. Yes. What do you, so no 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 no. My my thing is I'm going to do this until I find a place that I want to live more than I want to grow up in. Like so like my thing is. I'm going to go to all the places I think I would love. Mm-hmm. If I want to stay there, I'm going to stay there. If I don't, I don't. But I have to love it more than how much I'd love being back in Boston, just closer to the family. Right. Sure. So like, and that's why, like in the beginning, I was like, I'm going to go to two places, then California. Now that I'm thinking, I'm just, I'm enjoying every city, like, every why, place I go why to. Stop? Why limit? I'm going to go to like 90 cities before I get to Cali, because I know every, when I, the last time I was in California, I was like, this place was 
made for cute. Like it is the so. I, I love mean, that place. <laughs> I'm sorry. The the part of my brain that wants to crank out content is like this is a great opportunity for you to document it however you want to document it. Yes. Blog it blog it, whatever, keep a notebook, something, because this is, this is a really cool experience. And you said it last time, you're not attached, you know, whether it be romantically or financially or family wise. So just do it. This is like, this is what traveling nerd is like beautifully designed for is to be able to explore all these parts of the country or world, depending on how far you want to take the traveling and then you get to say at the end like oh of all the places i've been the place that really makes my heart skip a beat is here or wherever yes. and it's true it's got to be better than home it's got to be better than all of the course. stuff that's like comfortable and familiar and you know family and all of that so that's cool can you name like just like a couple other cities that are somewhere between east coast and west coast that you want to hit up like are yes, there any other yes, big ones yes 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 oh absolutely let so me hear let me hear so i want to i want to go to north carolina i don't know where because i just have a friend down in north carolina that yeah like, whatever city he is, i think it's durham raleigh whatever the yeah. place is right i also want to stop in south carolina i want to go to myrtle beach i think that's fantastic mm, i love myrtle I mean, beach so pretty there <laughs> i'm telling you but um i know everyone thinks florida is crazy but i have to taste it i feel like i have to taste florida yeah i mean there's <laughs> there's crazy shit about everywhere yes um and then just watch um, out for Georgia. the alligators and you'll be fine no, no, don't, don't worry about that i don't, <laughs> I, don't I don't get close enough to worry about alligators but yes so then i have to stop at atlanta i want to go to louisiana for those who are looking um missouri is um what it's there's a city in missouri like they we have they give you all of these at like um these graphics and like these stats and telling you where the base place best places to be a travel nurse are mm -hmm. like like they they calculate the how much you're getting paid the cost of living how much the stipends are going to be how much all of these things and they'll tell you these are the best places and a lot of the times missouri um, and Texas end up high on that list. Mm. So I want to go there just to understand why. Is totally. it because it's such a short of nor nurses, like they don't have enough nurses, or is it just because there's too many people? Like, I just, I want to go yeah, there to find what, out. what is it? And exactly. also, like, I don't know, as you're talking, I'm like, mm, yep, I would eat there. Yep, there's good food there. <laughs> Pretty much, like, yes. if you're going to travel through the South, you've got you've to enjoy, enjoy. Oh, no, there's a million places. Area. There's a million places. Yeah, but I, I get could go it. On like, for I days. feel that way too, but I yes. just, you know. What are that was kind of like what are everybody has that list of like I'd live here and here, but it's like what are the places that are actually like next, you know, next yes. on the list, like the places you're actually trying to target. So that's nice. You got like a nice little swoop down, you know, the the coast, and then maybe through. Um, I wish I wish nothing but good things for you. I can't wait Thank to you. hear how this goes in the future. Yes. So. I want to shift gears a little bit and I want to talk about something that's more seasonal and more topical. 2020 is the year I'm going to try to be more topical and timely with things. Yeah. So it is the new year. You know, I'm not one of those people that like actually sets like, Oh, I have new year's resolutions. I'm not the person that's like going to the gym three times a week for the first three weeks of the year. And then it tapers off. Um, I am one of those people that I like to, if I get an idea in my head that I want to set a new goal, I set that new goal whether that point of newness is a monday or the new year or whatever but for the sake of argument we're going to call the new year a good opportunity to like set some goals um i just recently put up a blog post about um what kind of goals i'm setting professionally for 2020 and kind of talking through like some people think you should keep your goals it, that's something for you. Some people say, put it on blast, and then you've got an extra level of accountability. I think there's like a blend of that that occurs. I've got some goals that are very much private and that I'm guarding, not only because they're they're private, but also it's like, well, if you don't hit that goal, you don't want the whole world knowing how far you fell short. So there's like this protective level, but also I'm kind of like, well, I talk about it. And so I put that blog post up. I'm not going to go through like all of my goals for the year, but I think that there were some common things that I did to like set my goals. And so I wanted to talk to you about just some of the 
general ways that you think about goal setting, like how you try to keep yourself on track, like what, because everybody's got a different style. Some people are like me, they have to have a plan, they have to write it out on paper in order to feel like it's something that's coming to fruition. Other people are like, I just made up my mind, I'm going to do this thing. I don't need to tell anybody, I just need to do it. So tell me, where on the spectrum do you fall? Like when you, how do you, how do you start this process? How do you say like, I have goals, clearly you're achieving one right now, you're traveling. So how do you take these things from like crazy ideas in your head to being like a thing that you're doing? Yeah, uh, that's, it's, it that's really a, big is a big question. It re- no, it really is a big question. I think it is a super important question because I mean, that's, what we're all doing, right? We're all trying to chase something. We're all trying to get somewhere. Mm-hmm. But um, for me, like to answer the question is honestly, like I, I am definitely the opposite of you, right? I don't write things down. <laughs> you don't I have don't... cute post-it notes hanging on your computer monitor? Yes, but the caveat is that I need to be more of that person just because, look, I am, <clears throat> if I write something down, it's not like that I'm tied down to it, but like I need to... I need to start seeing progress. I need to start documenting progress. I need to start seeing how far and how, like, how I'm getting to where I'm chasing, right? But because for me, it's every day I wake up and I'm like, if there's a new thing, I'm chasing that. Fuck everything I thought 10 minutes before. <laughs> Forget about yesterday. Like, I, I just want to just move on to the thing that I'm starting now. But I feel like if I have things written down, um, it's going to help me a little bit better. But that, the answer is yes. No, I just go with the gut. Every single day, every single morning, every single week, month, year, there's no written resolutions. There's no written plan for the day. There's no tasks list. All it is is how am I feeling? What do I want to do? How can I get there? And what do I need to do today to get there? I mean, that's just how I work. Yeah. See the downfalls. I definitely see the downfalls. No, but it's true because I think that there needs to be some balance between me making lists and like watching productivity videos and feeling like I need to make this (laughs) academic. Like I feel like everything needs to become like a fucking QI project now because I've been in school for so damn long. But, But there's something to like, like one of the things I think about is the thing the things that i want to get into goals or things that i want to change are the things that piss me off on a regular basis so for example those things that i said as like quality improvement projects at work are the things that drive me crazy or the or the what a thing that bugs me in my apartment the piece of furniture that i keep every time i come around the corner like if you have a goal you have to think what, how am I going to make this better? Cause you might move that table over three inches. So you don't kick it when you come around the corner, but then maybe it's infringing upon other parts of your space. So for me, I do feel like there's some level of, it doesn't need to be serious planning, but I think about like, what are the things that most annoy me? Those things I want to hit first, you know? So like, whether it be at work or in my private life, I think, yeah, what are the things that are most pressing? Or even on the flip side of that, like, what are the things that I can do that are going to bring me the most benefit in my life? You know, like those are the things that I try to hit first. What are the the high highs and the low lows? Like, what are the things that I'm going to benefit from immediately? And what are the things that are going to stop pissing me off if I can just get this change, you know, to happen, whatever that is. I know that's like a huge vague concept, but that's where, that's where my head goes. I hear you. The other, the other thing, and I said this in the, in the blog, one of the, one of the, phrases or statements that I heard that made me feel like I had more control was when I quit smoking cigarettes, which, you know, I've, I smoked for 10 years. It was stupid. I've been a non-smoker for like, I don't know, six or seven years now. I stopped on track because it's just so far in my rear view. But one of the things I had to tell myself was that I wasn't, because you know, you get those cravings, you get those urges. Maybe you don't, you've never smoked, which is good. But, um, I would tell myself, I'm going to quit for today, just for today. And then I would re-up that agreement every day. So it's kind of like when I set goals, I think to myself, I'm only going to have this goal for today, but I need to renew that commitment every day. Because otherwise saying like, I'm going to go to the gym three times a week, every week for the rest of my life. That's a big goal. Like, how are you going to keep that? That's humongous. Yeah. 
Yeah. So I like to think about. Can I ask, are you still saying that today? Yeah. Yeah. I try, to? I try to very much so because I, like I said, I, I have this really productive side of me and then I have this really lazy side of me. And if I don't keep those two in balance, I either burn out really fast or I don't achieve much of anything. And then I feel like I'm wasting time that I'm not guaranteed not, you know, achieving those goals. Um, so I don't know. I think that anything that I want to stick to, even though I may have a longer term plan for it, yeah, I kind of have to take that mentality. I have a very addictive personality. I have to take that mentality of, I'm going to do this good thing that may be disciplined or hard to do, but I just need to do it for right now. Like, I don't need to overwhelm myself with the thought of every day or forever. Or I can never do this thing again. And if I fall off, you know, I think of it as like a skateboard. If I fall off the skateboard, pick up the skateboard, get back on the skateboard. So yes. I don't know. That's for me is just like kind of general habit forming and goal setting. So I don't know. Maybe that's overcomplicated. Maybe no, I'm thinking no, no, about no. it too much. Uh, I, so, yes. I mean, like, uh, it's... It, because it's really easy to make New Year's resolutions. It's really easy to oh, yeah. like to set the goal, to say something that sounds right, to sound achievable, whatever. Put it on whatever. your Pinterest board. Exactly. Yeah. It's, that's the easy part. The, the harder part is understanding who you are and which goals make, not which goals make sense, but how do you chase the goals that you set, right? So mm -hmm. like you can make whatever goal you want, but you have to understand who Q is or who Adrian, whoever you are is, so then you can figure your way out that really crazy, sneaky, most difficult. It's just, it's a hard thing to do. And especially when it comes to health goals, us nurses know like eating healthy, oh, yeah. stop smoking, oh, gosh, yeah. whatever, the, whatever the goddamn goal is, lose <laughs> weight, which everyone and their mother wants to do, right? So like those are those goals that are very difficult. And those are the goals that you have to look at yourself the, um, the longest in the mirror and just like really break it down. Yeah, I am kind of a lazy bum sometimes. Yeah, I do <laughs> overeat sometimes. Yeah, I'm not going to study for this test someday because I want to go out and see my friends. Whatever your goal is, you have to figure out where your stops are and then like plan around it. Yeah, and then also you remember that just because you had like that piece of pie that you weren't counting on eating that day doesn't mean that you like throw the whole thing out the window and you say, fuck it, I screwed up. That's the end of it. It's never going to be good again. <laughs> you just say, okay, I had, mm, had a little oops. And then that next day you make that commitment all over again. And I feel it's that way, whether it's you want to go to school and you have to fucking push through those last weeks of the semester or, right. or, you know, following your, your, plan or whatever it is but I think there's a lot to be said for trying to make these changes as like intertwined with what you're already doing as you possibly can so like um you know I tell people if you have to take a medication every day and you can't remember to take that fucking pill well instead of making that an extra thing you have to do uh combine it with something you already do every day so if you know you need to take your blood yes. pressure medicine every day instead of putting it in a cabinet you never go to and making that another task on your list if you know that you're going to brush your teeth every single morning put that fucking bottle of pills right next to your toothbrush make those things go together because then you're more likely to have success if those two things are connected i think it's the same with anything same with school or career goals if there's something that you can do that is going to couple up with something else that you're trying to achieve or even if you've got a buddy at work and you know they're studying for the same like certification exam as you or they're trying to hit up the same gym as you like this is why to do things in packs like we're gregarious exactly. creatures and so i think that if you've got a goal to set having like an accountability partner or somebody to like make this less solitary and unenjoyable for you like that that's i think that's a great great thing to do you know no i hear you and like so i, I say all I've these things having... am i doing them i don't know maybe <laughs> <I'm> just... <laughs> no 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 but like the thing is it's like i hear you but at the end of the it's just it's really very it's it's very difficult for me to just decide to do something and then like work 
I, you have to understand why you're doing what you're doing before yeah. you actually go about doing it, right? Because every single day you do something and you're saying, this is, I'm doing it because I want to lose 15 pounds. But what, why? Why do you want to lose Do you want to lose 15 pounds so you can post on Insta? Like, what are you losing? Or 15, do you want to lose 15 pounds, 15 pounds so that you don't feel out of breath when you walk up the stairs to your apartment? Exactly. Like, what right? is your, what is your, well, you know, we talk about those rewards. What's your reward? Is it an intrinsic reward? Is it something that's good for you within yourself? Or is it extrinsic? Like, do you like the looks you get when you're jogging through the with like you know your your tiny shorts or whatever like what is, what are you actually after like what are you seeking that's that's a thing bro because that, that that why is gonna carry you if that why is real superficial and maybe the superficial means a lot to you if that why doesn't mean a lot to you that why is gonna last and till the 15th of january and right? i don't think we should necessarily put those negative values on those superficial things because even if you want to get your master's degree because you want to say you've got your master's well that's okay because you're still doing all the other things that it takes to get degree like it's important for other reasons too but you can flex a little like that's all right. that's the benefit of having <laughs> achieved something so like yeah maybe that's another thing we can say is that one of those ways to motivate yourself for those things that maybe otherwise wouldn't be desirable is to keep your eye on that fucking prize like you know think about what you're gonna achieve and how close you are to getting there you know like I don't know. I'm terrible at that. I'm terrible about thinking about those like long-term abstract goals, like the, I want to lose 50 pounds, which was on my, um, my list of like goals, my second year as a nurse. And now I'm kind of like, well, yeah, I set that up. I said, I wanted to do that, but I didn't say like, I want to eat less dairy. I want to, like, I didn't have steps in there to make it happen. Yes. I just set this goal that was like, I want to do this cool thing this year. But for me, I'm the type of person that I know I need to break it down. I need to say, like, what are the first three things I need to do to make myself actually want to do this, able do to do it. this? Yeah. Yeah. That's as, as simple as that. No, I hear you. I hear you. It's, it's, it's so tough though. And, you know, people message me sometimes and they're like, you know, I have this decision to make and I don't know if I want to do clinicals here and work here or like some totally other different combination, but people will email all the time and be like, how do I, how do I get this thing that I want to do? And it's like, well, that's really difficult for me to answer because wh why do you want to do it? What's your motivation? Look, like, yes. Yes. So I, I'm happy you said that because yes, I forgot for like, because we were just talking about some like abstract, like big picture stuff. Right. So yeah, for like sure. you said, like you said, you just brought up all the nursing stuff and yes, we're both nurses and that's why we're doing this. So bringing us back to like new year's nurses resolutions, right. Um, if your new year's resolution, like mine was four or five years ago was to get more IVs in, right. Like, is it, if it's as simple as that, it's like literally like every single, so there's this dude at my the hospital I work at right now that calls every nurse's station every time I'm on. Um, and he says, yeah, I, I'm still working on getting more IVs in. If you guys have a hard stick, I'm doing it. He's a, he's a sick you nurse. So like that makes me so happy to know that there's a nurse in the hospital that I work at that is reaching out to better his nursing skills. Mm -hmm. And he has the gall, the balls to say, I don't know it. I'm a bum. I can't do it, but I'm trying to do it. <laughs> and if you have the opportunity for me to fail, I am ready to jump to so it. So he took this idea, which yes. was, I want to get better at this, this like big picture. And he said, how am I going to do it? Well, I'm going to fucking call Q every time he's working <laughs> and say, Hey man, if you got any people, that need sticks you need a peripheral iv i'm your dude yes um that's an action step that's something that's actually tangible that can be done that can actually like improve his practice it makes it's me fantastic. wonder like what other things he's doing like for example like one of the things i do is i've started following a couple like nurse iv gurus on instagram because they do little videos and tutorials on how to like do stuff better or like your technique that's an action step and it's yes. an easy one too. And so, yeah, this is cool. 
is. I, no, I'm saying I love it. I, I'm telling I, you, I do I it sometimes it. too. I don't put out a blanket call because when you say on my unit, if you say, "Hey, if you need any help with blood draws or IVs," you got four people going. Actually, over here, I need a total my drop. <laughs> I need a new peripheral in bed twenty-two. Like you're gonna, like you're gonna be like, you whoa, whoa, the whoa, new IV nurse. whoa, hold on, hold on. I still have my own med pass. Like, so yeah, so I haven't done stuff like that, but that's idea to say like hey i saw you're getting an admission if you need help getting blood cultures yes. or whatever let me know these these are real things so figure out how to turn your like big picture goal into like what can i do today to get me a little bit closer to this exactly. yeah that's a good way exactly. to look at it yeah so it was funny because one of the goals that i set was to be more involved on committees at work because i really want to be involved in decision making policy forming like that's important to me because at my hospital like if you don't speak up they're never going to know and the shit isn't going to get fixed and your practice isn't going to get better so i very much like committees and so i went from being on none the last time I just did my self review for work, like literally just filled it out early, early this morning. Um, but one of the I things I said about those self reviews, yeah, mm. I have a hard, I okay, all right, yes, well, go that's, ahead, keep that's, going. A, that's a whole, that's a whole <laughs> separate topic. I'm but sorry. one of my reviews that I did a year ago was I said, like, hey, I want to join a committee. Well, now I'm on four. There you go, girl. <laughs> and a couple of them are just like, you know, fun little, like one of them is like the celebration committee on my unit. So, it's like, oh, you know, it's nice. Lord. But then also I'm on like the staff education committee and I chair our unit-based committee and, or I co-chair. Um, so there's, there's varying levels of intensity here, but it was, I had this goal and I signed up for one thing and then I did that for a little while and that went well and I thought well, maybe I'll throw on another and then I joined another committee and on my contribution to that committee started slowly and then it grew and then I joined another committee and now I've started this fourth one which I haven't attended any meetings yet but that's but I guess the point that I'm making is I had this idea that I wanted to be more involved and rather than saying on day one I'm gonna do this and this and this and this I just said hey for start, just going to do this committee unit with my people. And now that I've done a few of those steps, I can say, okay, now I'm ready for hospital-wide shared governance. And I want to get involved with that because I've been doing these little itty bitty, itty bit. I almost said itty bitty titty committee. <laughs> That's not at all what this is. Um, I've been joining these small committees in preparation to like level up. So I think there's something to be said yes. for like finding these little bite sides that you can do and then if you decide that that bite-sized piece wasn't free, well you haven't like destroyed an entire plan because you're just doing it one bite-sized piece at a time you know and if you decide exactly. on bite number exactly. two that it's not for you well find something and that's different. your decision right yeah. that, that's your decision Goal setting is difficult, though. I don't just want to make it sound like we have all the answers in this like 45 minute episode. Oh, but yeah, but it's important to talk about these things and talk to other people about how they goal set. No, you and I have totally different like structures or like ways that we formulate goals. We still have kind of what works best for us exactly. and then you got to be true to that because if i gave you my steps on how to achieve goal it's not going to work for you the same way that your way of going about things is not going to work for me so i think it's really important to like glean what you can off of people that are similar from you similar to you be like oh hey me and betty lou are really similar in the way we set goals i might ask like mm, how's she doing this how, you know like she's on a bunch of shared exactly. governance just the how easy stuff yeah yeah and it doesn't have to be like a huge process like i'm making it sound like but i just think knowing what you want or at least exploring what you want not being ashamed if that turns out Adrian, before, be before we go can i just can i just can i just like expand on something you just said yeah of course so the goals the are super just the goals are super important, right? And all of this stuff is super important. We're talking about how to set them and how to keep track and all that. But like she just said, so the bite-sized thing just speaks to me so well because it doesn't fucking, it doesn't matter what the goal is. If you're not willing to act, Rook, if you write down the plan to the T and you need all the plans written down and planned out or whatever, like Adrian, great, get them done. But the most important thing is to jump 
into that action. If the plan is to join a committee, join that committee the day of. Just leave a note under your, your charge nurses or your manager's door. I am part of the UBC of the governance or the EBP of whatever club you want to join. <laughs> you just need to start. Please, please start. Just do it doesn't it. matter what your goal is. If it's starting IVs, call the unit, tell them I want to start IVs. If it's joining a unit, if it's getting a job up, whatever the goddamn thing is, please. If it's just not start. drinking the 600 calorie coffee out of the cafeteria, <laughs> then you find somebody else on that unit who also is trying to break that habit and you stick with them and you give them dirty looks across that nurse's station if yes. they break and say, hmm back on the wagon exactly. for you Please. yeah no these are good things these are good you gotta things. start bro just start <laughs> it man yes so there's we could talk for hours longer this is a chronic problem that i have is that i have i have guests like you that i'm just like an hour feels so inadequate but yes. but it is what it is and i have another committee to run off to <laughs> of in a little while do. here yeah. of course i do um yeah it's it's an interesting topic. I, I think that this could be discussed in a hundred different directions for a hundred different personality types. But the, the bottom line is, is that if you want something, you need to keep that prize in mind. Cause that's the only thing that's going to get you there. If you lose that. sight of what you're doing, ever, then you're just going through the motions and that shit's not going to last. It's not going to be, it's not going to be anything that really helps you in your practice or in your person. So, um, yeah. <laughs> very philosophical, very like, very woo woo here. Oh, I hear you. We're about that woo woo. We're nurses. We understand. You need the hugs and the kisses. The TLC you do. is what we you do. do. You do. So it's a new year. Will you share just one goal? It doesn't have to be. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. Share, share a goal with us listening out here. What goal that you have for yourself so for this year? My, my, my whole goal is like, because uh, with just it's very specific to child nursing, but it's nursing oriented. My whole goal is um, I need to stop being so negative. I love the part of child nursing when it comes to actually being on the unit, being a nurse, meeting the coworkers, all that stuff. But being a child nurse, you have to go through orientation every time. You have to go through all of those steps. Mm -hmm. You have to go shadow a nurse. I am trying to just accept that and take in that information because yes, the orientation might for the 80% of the meet is the same. You just need the directions, but it's a good time to really get to know the people. It's a good time to get settled. It's a good time. So I'm trying to accept all the difficulties that come with being a travel nurse. Yes. Even though that this is just my second assignment. Say, you know, I feel that. I feel that. I'm the type of person that I, what do I say all the time? That hour long meeting could have been a 10 minute meeting. Like, exactly. I get it. I get exactly. it. You want to just power through. You want to get to the guts of it. You want to skip over all the like fluff. Yes. But you're right. In that fluff, there is relationship building, learning a different perspective. Even if you're hearing all these things that you already know, you're getting paid. Just Amen. let them tell, right. let them show you how to work the fixes. It's right? going to be okay. It's going to be all right. And I think that when you have a level of grace about yourself, a level of like suave, you allow those things to happen. You don't roll your eyes, tap your feet. So when is this going to end? Well, you know what? It's going to end when it ends. And until then, exactly. just make the best of it. So, oh, all this Thank advice you, I'm given that I don't take for myself. <laughs> oh, fish it out. Oh my God. I hear you, girl. All right. Well, I am, I'm going to call it here. I, you know, the, the carpet is rolled out for you. You can come back again sometime soon. It's always a pleasure. Sure. Where can people find you? People. Oh yeah, internet. of course. Where do, they, where do they get to you? So it's simple. Q the nurse or just the letter Q and then the nurse. You can find me on Insta, uh, on Facebook, on YouTube, on all of the nines and, and every podcast version place where you pick up and listen to your podcast you can find me there um yes just cue the nurse thank you very much same and you can check out nursinguncensored.com you can find us on all the same places you can find q um that's that's what's great about this is that we're exactly. all kind of we're all we're all out there you can find us so uh yeah until next time oh happy nursing thank you adrian <laughs> have a good, have a good one. one girl all right i'm out the door i'll talk to you soon Bye-bye. All right, bye.
Here at Nursing Uncensored, we may be, well, uncensored, but we're not unfiltered. Protected health information has been changed and concealed to comply with HIPAA. The things we talk about are from years of experience with thousands of patients, things we've read, stories we've heard. If you think we're talking about you, we're not. Also, we're real nurses here to provide helpful and accurate information, but don't take anything we say as fact without doing your own research. Refer to your state's Board of Nursing, Practice Acts, and your institution's policies and procedures if you have questions about your practice. Lastly, our very strong opinions are ours alone and do not reflect those of our employers, educational, or professional institutions. Thanks for listening, and happy nursing, folks.